Okay, so the approach that we've been uh, looking at for solving first order linear differential equations is called the method of integrating factors. And here I've listed the steps that we discussed in the last video. And so now we're going to just practice following those steps. To do this, we're going to start with example 8, or rather item number 8, in uh, the homework section for section 9.1. And the instructions say solve the differential equation using the method of integrating factors. And they give us dy dx minus 4xy equals 0. So the first thing is, in order to use the method of integrating factors, we need to be able to recognize that it follows the pattern of a first order linear differential equation um, and identify what p of x and q of x are. So in, um, when we're looking for p of x, we always just look for the coefficient of y, which in this case is negative 4x. And then q of x is whatever's left on the other side of the equation, assuming that we've rearranged to this point. Sometimes we'll have to arrange the equation, but in this case it's arranged for us properly. All right, so step one is going to be to find what I called g of x, which is the antiderivative of p of x, which is going to be negative 4 times x squared over 2, or negative 2x squared. And we don't need the c. We just go with c being equal to 0. All right, step two is to raise e to that power, e to the g of x, and distribute it through the function. So we're going to multiply e to the negative 2x squared through our original equation. So we'll have e to the negative 2x squared times dy dx minus e to the negative 2x squared times 4xy equals e to the negative 2x squared times 0, which is just 0. Then we want to recognize for step 3 that this is the result of a product rule that if we took the derivative of e to the negative 2x squared times y that we would get this. So let's just check that out. We would have the first times the derivative of the second minus the second function which is y times, now the rest of this should be the derivative of the first, and let's check. Derivative of e to the negative 2x squared would be e to the negative 2x squared times the derivative of negative 2x squared, which is negative 4x. So in fact, that is exactly what we have, and that's equal to 0. Now we take the antiderivative of both sides, that's the fourth step, so that leaves us with e to the negative 2x squared y is equal to the antiderivative of 0. Well, what do you differentiate to get 0? Well, any constant c. So now we have the solution, although it's written implicitly, that e to the negative 2x squared times y equals c. If we want to write this explicitly, the solution is y equals c over e to the negative 2x squared, or actually taking advantage of this negative exponent, we could just write c times e to the positive 2x squared. And we're done. And notice this wasn't an initial value problem, so we're not trying to find a particular value of c, we're just looking for the family of functions that are solutions to the equation. Now let's take a look at example 3 on page 590. We're asked to solve the initial value problem 
and you know immediately when you see that that you're going to have a differential equation as well as um, some point on the solution. We have x times dy dx minus y equals x and y of 1 is equal to 2. And so here's our differential equation and the first thing we would like to do is get it into a form that's um, you know, simple to solve. Um, it's almost a linear equation, a uh, first order linear equation, except remember that in our pattern for first order linear equations, there's no coefficient in front of dy dx. So we want something of the form dy dx plus p of x times y equals q of x. So in this case, we have some rearranging to do. Okay, now one way to solve this is to go ahead and divide through by the x, which is going to get the dy dx by itself. It also has the effect, though, of forcing us to exclude a certain x value from our possible solutions. So dividing through by x, we have dy dx minus y over x equals 1. So obviously, we can't have a solution where x is equal to 0. In other words, we can't consider functions p of x and q of x to be um, continuous on um, negative infinity to infinity. We have to leave out the possibility of x equals 0. Um, to see that, I'm just going to rewrite this as instead of y over x, negative 1 over x times y. And so this is the function p of x, negative 1 over x. So now, um, keeping that restriction in mind, we can just go ahead and identify our p of x as negative 1 over x. q of x then is going to be equal to 1. And we're going to use the procedure of the method of integrating factors. So the first step is going to be to find our g of x, in other words, to integrate negative 1 over x dx. Okay, so the antiderivative of 1 over x is natural log. So this is going to be the negative of the natural log of the absolute value of x. Now sometimes having absolute values in there can uh, make things a little tricky. So notice that in the initial value problem, we were asked to look at it, the x value 1, which was a good thing it wasn't 0, because that would have been a problem. But also, it's greater than 0, so I'm just going to rewrite this as negative natural log of x, where x is greater than 0. Okay, so the second step then is to um, raise e to this power and multiply through our original equation here. But um, I just noticed that if I raise e to the negative natural log of x, this expression can be simplified. So rather than multiply through by this expression, I'm just going to simplify it first. And so notice that this is the same as e to the natural log of x to the negative 1, if you bring the negative inside as an exponent and then e to the natural log cancels and we just have x to the negative 1 or 1 over x. So this is what I'm going to distribute through my uh, original function, well actually not my original function, my uh, modified function that fits the pattern here. So multiplying that through by 1 over x, I'm going to have 1 over x times dy dx minus 1 over x squared y equals 1 over x. All right, now step 3, reverse the product rule here. So we're going to have um, the first times derivative of the second. So the derivative of the product 1 over x times y. Now let's just double check. So derivative of the first times the second, well actually I said that the, other, the wrong way. The first times the derivative of the second plus the second, which is y, times the derivative of the first. And the derivative of x to the negative 1 is negative x to the negative 2. So we're in good shape here. Okay. 
So um, what do we do next? Step four, we're going to integrate to get rid of this d dx here. So that's going to leave us with 1 over x times y equals the antiderivative of 1 over x dx. Now the antiderivative of 1 over x is natural log absolute value, but we're assuming that x is positive anyway. Let's just make a note of that, plus c. Okay, so this is um, an implicit form of our function, uh, but in this case it would not be difficult to multiply through by x on both sides. After all, we know x is non-zero. And get um, an explicit form of the function. And then finally, since this is an initial value problem, oh, by the way, we could, at this point, we could check if we wanted to. For the sake of time, I'm going to skip that, but it's never a bad idea, of course, when solving an equation to plug in and check to make sure that that's um, a solution. All right, so, but our fifth step then, it um, only happens when we have an initial value problem. We're going to plug in 2 for y and 1 for x. Okay, and that gives us 2 equals 1 times the natural log of 1 is 0, so that's just going to be 0, plus c, so c is equal to 2. So the equation or function we were looking for is x natural log of x plus 5, oops, excuse me, not 5, 2x.